Okay, this is still section 2.1, and we're going to be looking specifically at the y equals sine theta graph. And here I've got set up what you have to start with in your graphing, uh, hand graphing technique. Okay, the first thing you always do is you set up a Cartesian plane, okay, just like if, if you had the unit circle there. And then what you do is you put um, four slashes to the right and four slashes to the left because we want to have a negative period, one revolution, a negative revolution and a positive revolution of that unit circle as it goes around the circle. And then what you do is you want to, you want to divide it into um, 90 degree segments or if you like uh, I put them in radians because that's what you're uh, traditionally what's uh, done in ge ge geometry pardon me uh, is they put the units in radians so this represents 90, 180, 270 and 360 degrees on the positive side if you like degrees and this uh, represents negative 90, negative 180, negative 270 and negative 360 degrees on the on the negative side as well as the radian degrees and then we know that the maximum of the unit circle graph is 1 and then minimum is negative 1 but I just extended it a little bit so that we have a little bigger graph so as we go around it as we start at 0 for the sine graph we know that at 0 we have a point of 0 okay remembering the unit circle if we uh, I can flip back here real quick to the unit circle here. If I'm right there, that second point, y point, the sine point is zero. Then it'll increase nicely, and here it'll get up to a one at pi over two radians or 90 degrees. So that's what we do there. We follow around the unit circle and we put a one here, and then drops back down to zero, and then it drops to a negative 1 at 270 degrees or three pi over 3 or pi over 2 and then back up to 0 at 2 pi radians. So put your dots in there. Do the same here as you go backwards. So as you drop down to negative, so as you go down to negative, it starts out at negative 1. So you go this way, negative 90 degrees or negative uh, pi over 2 radians. So as you go backwards on the sine graph, it looks like this. It comes down to a negative 1 here back up to a zero here, up to a maximum here, and back down to a zero. So there's our maximum and minimum points of our graph. Now, if we want to know how, how much curve do we have on there, it's approximately, we could do a little bit of a calculation if you like. We know that in between is 45 degrees. And we know what the sine of 45 is if you use the 45, 45, 90 degree triangle, right? And if you look on uh, in your chart in your textbook, you know that it's pi over, or sorry, two root two over two. So we can calculate what root two over two would be. It's got to be less than one. So if you take your calculator and go take the root of two, you get 1.41, and divide by two, it gives you a value of about 0 0.707. So it's about about up to here. Okay, so 0 0.707 would be somewhere about in here. So and then on this, it would be fairly equal as you go along here through there. So you know that your curve is going to look like this. Okay, and then you'd have the same kind of shape up here. There's your positive period. Okay, now your negative period, of course, you're at the 45, you're looking at about here somewhere. Just to give you an idea of where, what the shape would look like. And just completing the, so it's a uniform. So there is one negative revolution and one positive revolution of the sine graph. So that's what the sine graph y equals sine theta graph looks like. Now what we do here is I'm going to take my calculator out and show you on the calculator, the graphing calculator, how to set it up and, and uh, get the graph on your on your graphing calculator. So first of all, the first thing you have to do is make sure that your graphing calculator here, let's make sure that's in the view here, 
Maybe I'll zoom in just a little bit. Okay, so on the graphing calculator, you have to set up your window first. So click your window button here. Now I have it in degrees, as you can see. So the only reason I uh, have it in degrees is it's just easier to plug in 360 than sometimes plug in the pi uh, radium ones. But I'll, I'll show you how to use both of them as well. So what we want to do is we want our x minimum and x maximum. That's our scale to be negative 360 degrees to positive 360 degrees or 2 pi radians and negative 2 pi radians if you have it in radians. Our scale, our x scale is every 90 degrees we want. Okay, so, so or, or pi over 2 radians if you have it in radians. Now our minimum and our maximum, we want our y minimum to be negative 1. So put in negative 1. Instead, I have negative 10 in there right now, so I'm going to put in negative 1. Our y maximum, we want just to be 1, so clear that and put in a 1. And then our x and y scale, uh, just 1 is fine, because that's how it chops it up. And then what you do is you hit the graph button here, or the y button, pardon me, y equals button here. And I've got the tangent graph in right now but you can type in sine, which is right here, and then put a bracket. Oop, let's clear that first of all. Sine puts a bracket for you. And then to get an x, you have to use this variable button here that looks like x, has an x on it, a t on it, a theta on it, or an n on it. So I'm going to put an x in there, and then I'm going to close the brackets. And then you hit the graph button here. And there you can see our sine graph. I think the axis isn't showing up on this calculator for some reason. It's not putting it in there. Let me just check my window one more time. Let's make sure that I have it in degrees here. So what you do is you go to mode. It's in degrees, see? Not in radians. I think maybe that the, the screen on this one's wore out a little bit. But anyways, let's go back to the graph. You should have, obviously, x there and a y right there. It's not showing up there for some reason. Let's see if I can get it on the trace here. Yeah, see on the, I think it's the screen of this calculator. So what we'll do is I'll have to change calculators here to graph that for you. So in my next graph, I'll do that for you. But basically, it still has the same shape as our handwritten graph. We're just missing the axes for some reason. I think this calculator's seen better days. So I'll switch calculators for the next graph. In our next tutorial, I'm going to draw the coast graph.